Welcome to It's Not Over with Dr. Dan Farrell. I'm Josh, and uh, with me in studio today, we have, of course, our host, Dr. Farrell, and a special guest, Charles. Uh, Jordan's on vacation. That's right. He left, and uh, I'm glad he did. You know, we can kid people. We can kid too much, but uh, he needs it. And so, Brother Charles, it's good to have you. He teaches at our Lakota Christian School, also Antioch Baptist College, teaches a an exciting class called Bibliology, the Defense of the Bible, and uh, has a wonderful wife and two precious children. Am yep. I right? Yes, I do. Uh, Isaac and Chloe. Yeah, it's exciting. Yeah, thank you. And uh, so we um, are excited about him uh, helping us. Miss Hannah hasn't been with us for several weeks, but she's engaged to get married. And uh, so we have a lot of people that can help us with our radio program, our, our podcast. And remember now we're on Sermon Audio and YouTube. And should people send us thousands and thousands of dollars, we'll get back on radio. Yep. Amen? That, that's about the only way. <laughs> I know. All right, here we go. John chapter 1. Josh, if you'll read verse 12 and 13. John 1, 12 and 13 says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Amen. Now this lesson, if you're uh, looking for the title of this message, the right to receive him. It says there in verse 10, he was in the world, the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came into his own, and his own received him not. But notice, but as many as received him, to them gave he the power, or the right, to become the sons of God. Now, too many saints fail to realize their legal adoption and citizenship. It's no wonder Christians are so worldly. They've forgotten that they are not of this world, Mm. even as Christ is not of this world. So uh, I used to, when I was a little boy, I'd get in trouble at church, and somebody would say, hey, aren't you Henry's son? I know who your dad is. Well, that put a heavy responsibility on me because people knew who my father was. Once people know who your father is, you've got to live up to that family name. You wow. see, yeah. And the problem with Christians is they forget who their father is. You have a family name to live up to. So let's talk about this. Number one, the rejection. Uh, we'll talk about how Christ was rejected. Number two, the reception. The, the Lord Jesus Christ, of course, as we read in verse 1 through 10, is the creator, the master, the designer, literally, in Amen. the world. I was reading mm-hmm. this today where Jeremiah was talking about how God created heaven and the earth. You know, if you believe in evolution, you got to call Moses a liar, mm-hmm. Jeremiah a liar, mm-hmm. Paul a liar, and Jesus a Jesus, liar. Jesus, yes. Now, I don't know. I think those are pretty smart dudes. Yeah. I shouldn't call him our Savior a dude, but pretty smart. Yep. A lot smarter than some of these pinheads that teach in our universities, mm-hmm. right? And yet these these men, inspired men, like, for instance, Noah, who built that huge ocean liner, and Moses, the, uh, the, the giver of the Decalogue, but of course we understand it came straight from God. These men were intelligent men. They didn't believe in evolution. Right. And, you, you know, ahead. you've got guys that are receiving direct revelation from God, like Moses, for instance. You'd think that if evolution were true, God would have mentioned that, you know? Yeah, I would have thought so. Yeah, but apparently... It's not true. That's why there's but, nothing about it in the Bible. Christians who are afraid to be out of step yeah. with the world, and so they want to say, well, six days could mean six million years. Right. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So the Hebrew word yom, uh, you can stretch oh, that mean, to mean whatever you it just, want. Yeah, whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Uh, I tell Words you. don't have meaning. So while in the East, uh, while the East was groping in majestic mystic Zoroastrianism, Buddhism, Hinduism, and while the West, the Greco-Roman world, was uh, uh, deifying their emperors and creating new gods to rule over their drunken feasts and orgies, and while Judaism was still sitting in darkness looking for the kingdom, here comes Jesus, the Son of God. He came into his own. Now, by the way, he didn't go to the Peruvians. He didn't go to the Africans. He came into his own, Mm -hmm. and his own received him not. The Roman government, uh, Pilate and Herod, had a chance to interview and examine him, but they only saw him as a helpless criminal. They didn't view him or even entertain the idea that he was the Messiah. And so Jesus came into his own. How did he come to his own? Sermons. Man, they heard the greatest sermons by Jesus. Miracles, great works, and fulfilled prophecy. And then, yet they offered to the Jews that, that great offer himself, and they rejected him. I'll tell you what, man, I, I don't know if you guys are both married. I don't know if you know what it's like to fall in love with a girl and put your best foot forward, and she doesn't want you. <laughs> man, that kind of rejection, you know. Of course, that never happened to Charles. He's good looking. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he just never. He had, right? to, he had to beat Thanks. him back with a stick. 
Yeah, the girls were all <laughs> over him. But for the Lord Jesus Christ to be rejected like that. Remember when Pilate said, behold your king, and they said, crucify him. Yeah. Man, that is the epitome of rejection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow, my goodness. And that's what the Bible says. He right. was rejected of men. And I think, I think sometimes we, we think about it, you know, we think of Jesus and he's, he's God and he's divine and, and we think that he's made of, you know, steel or whatever. And in a sense, you know, he was, but man, that had to have, there, there had to have been some emotional trauma of thinking here, yeah. here he is after everything he's done, after he's healed all these people and they say crucify him. Yeah. He was a hundred percent human. Yeah. He I mean, was. he felt that, that yeah. doesn't it say that, where's that in the, doesn't it say that in the Bible, something where he was felt with our feelings yeah. of infirmities or the something? The feelings of our infirmities, right. Yeah. And so the Lord Jesus Christ, here he is, rejected. In fact, they still reject him. Yeah. So it's not just that he was rejected there, you know, there in Jerusalem. They To this day, in every synagogue across the world, they still reject Jesus And if Christ. you want to see it, all it takes is about two minutes, go down to any street corner and start preaching in Jesus' name. Yeah. No, no doubt you will be cussed at and yeah. have stuff hurled at you. Take yeah. you about two minutes. Yeah. Anywhere, anywhere. Preach in any other name, and you will be adored and tolerated. Mm -hmm. But that name Jesus, man, that carries a stigmatism. Mm -hmm. That carries hostility. So even as his expecting mother and Joseph found no place in the town of Bethlehem, and they were forced to go to a cold, damp barn, so today you will not find Jesus in the world's observance of Christmas. I mean, you know, everybody celebrates Christmas differently, I guess. But you got to admit, man, through all the tinsel and all the decoration and Santa Claus, where is Jesus and all that? Well, he's been relegated. I guess there is Jesus somewhere, but it's just he's he's been demoted to just nothing but a, a holiday icon. Yeah, and, he's uh, the baby Jesus. He's the baby Jesus. Mm -hmm. It really it, it stinks, man. I don't think God's too impressed with Christmas. I just don't. Now, he may be impressed the way a Christian home, in the privacy of their home, come together and with tears in their eyes, they thank God for the incarnation and so on. But I'll tell you what, this world, this drunken world, and can you imagine that getting drunk at Christmas time? <laughs> you know, you would think these bunch of stinking louses, these bunch of uh, mush brains, if they were going to get drunk, it wouldn't be on Jesus Christ's birthday. Right. Which I'm not saying December 25th is the birthday, but, but it's the perceived birthday. Mm -hmm. But they get drunk on his birthday. Right. Wow, man. It's amazing to me. Charles, you how old were you when you come to Christ? Nine years old. Nine years old. Mm -hmm. Did you go through those seasons where you were pretty worldly at the age of 18, 19, 20? Oh, absolutely, yes. Yeah. yeah. So would you drink on Christmas Day? No. No. Wow. So you're a pretty worldly guy, but you didn't even do that. Correct, yes. But I'll tell you what, Josh and I, we were street preaching last year. The Bengals had a, a playoff game. Mm -hmm. And and uh, I was preaching, and of course Josh, he does. He's a better street preacher than I am. But oh, I was street yeah. preaching, and those people were cussing me out mm -hmm. and saying "GD this" and "Shut your mouth." And boy, all of a sudden, I said, "Well, Merry Christmas." Is that what this is about? Merry Christmas. And then you yell at me, and I said, "You're a hypocrite." And I, I forget the the verbiage I used, but you know what? The, I don't know if you remember. They shut up, man. Yeah, they shut up. Because I said, and you're going to say, Mary, I, th I think it was on Christmas Eve. Hmm. And I said, tomorrow you're going to celebrate Christmas and you're going to cuss God. I said, you are a two-bit, two-faced hypocrite. Yeah. And um, I didn't say that out of meanness. I said that for shock value. Right. Yeah. It seems like it worked. Like, yeah. yeah. Did it stop their mouth? It did. It, it, there, was a, there was a hush. In fact, it took me back. Because typically when I say something like that, it doesn't shut anybody up. But it shut them up. Mm -hmm. All right. So the rejection was not a case of just ignorance. No, no, no. It was a rejection of willfulness. They knew or might have known who he was, but they deliberately refused to inquire into his credentials, and they shut the door in his face. This is why they are a nation today of a weary-footed wanderer, bronzed by the sun of every clime, having everywhere a recognition but nowhere a home. And so today the wandering Jew has no king but Caesar. Hmm. You wanted Caesar, you get him. And they see how we can, history shows how Caesar has treated That's right. the Jews throughout and history. Now. Not a very good king, a, a Hebrew. And, you know, listen to this, the Jews, if there's Jews, listen to us. We don't hate you. Man, we love you. And uh, we we count you as a, one, the most precious people, uh, nationally speaking. But, mm -hmm. man, you hate us, and you hate anybody that tries to introduce Jesus Christ to you. Mm -hmm. 
If you had any sense, you'd bow the knee to your Messiah, Jesus Christ, who already came and died and went back and coming again. Mm -hmm. Number two, the reception. Will God be denied? Will his plan be frustrated? I mean, is God the kind of God that just ends in failure? If the rich man rejects Jesus, a rich Joseph of Arimathea will receive him and loan him his tomb. If a multitude walks away in disbelief, well, there'll be 12 or 11 who will cleave to him and give their lives to him. If a Sapphira and Ananias will lie and cheat on him, there'll be a Priscilla and Aquila who will hazard their lives for Christ. Mm. Now, God's going to have his remnant. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so if you want to cuss him, go ahead. But the guy next door to you, he's going to trust Christ. Right. You want to go to hell, go to hell. But there's somebody that's going to try. See, that's the problem with lost people. They they see so many of their friends rejecting Christ. They feel a little bit, I think, safe mm -hmm. in that majority. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody else is going this direction. It'd be like a party boat going down the Niagara River, and you're jumping up and down having a party. But man, in a few minutes, you're going to go over that that cataract. And so uh, there are people trusting Christ everywhere. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's right. Praise God for that. So if there's some poor fool listening to us and you think you're smug in your self-conceits, let me tell you something, buddy. There's somebody trusting Christ. Just because you're not doesn't mean no one else is. Hmm. But as many, it says, but as many as received him. That's what the Bible teaches. Whosoever will. Free, bond, smart, ignorant, black, white, rich, poor, old, young, religious, or a pagan. If you receive Christ, elabon, comes from the Greek word lambano. It means to take. Take in hand, to seize, to assume, to get, receive, to catch, to accept, to receive him. Will you receive him, believing in his name? This reception is one of the is one of the heart. It is a full surrender of the affections and will. Uh, Charles, could you quickly get us Colossians two six? But to as many as received him, to them gave you the power. Now that is an interesting word, Josh. Remember your Greek. That's the Greek word exousia. Mm. In other words, I give you legal right, legal power, authority, a privilege to become a son of God. Colossians 2, six. As ye have therefore received Jesus Christ the Lord, so walk ye in him. See, you've got to receive Christ. Oh, yeah. See, he's not going to just knock the door down. But I'll tell you what he will do. He'll make himself so irresistible, man. I mean, and that's the way it was when you met when you met your wife. I mean, just there was just something irresistible about her, you know. Uh, and, but you didn't force her to marry you, but you won her over. Now, if Charles, a dummy, can win Sarah over to marry him, you mean to tell me the Holy Spirit can't win a sinner over? Hmm. How crazy is that? Yeah. So we are adopted. We are sons and daughters of Jesus Christ. We become heirs of God and joint heirs of Jesus Christ. Well, I want to thank you for uh, listening today. We've got uh, just a few short announcements. You're either listening through way of Sermon Audio slash It's Not Over, or you're on our YouTube channel, It's Not Over. And so uh, if you enjoy watching videos, you can see our smiling faces on our YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube, search by channel, and type in It's Not Over, and we're somewhere around the fourth or the fifth one on the list. You can see our uh, orange rust-colored backdrop. And then, of course, at Sermon Audio, if you uh, that's a very useful tool. You can get the mobile app and then listen to it anywhere you go, whether it's in the car or at work. And uh, you just type in It's Not Over with Dr. Dan Farrell, and it'll bring it right up. We have every single episode ever done while uh, when we were on radio and now as our uh, podcast form. Uh, is stored there on Sermon Audio. And uh, if you are one of our uh, listeners who used to listen to us on radio and you're interested in getting us back on radio, you can always still go to MorningStarMinistries.com where you are able to uh, donate through uh, the use of our PayPal button. That's still there. Or maybe you just want to contact us and encourage us. You can reach us through uh, that website and uh, send us an email and let us know how we are being a blessing to you. Here's Dr. Farrell to close. You know, First John 3, 1 and 2, Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Let me ask you, have you ever received the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Oh, my friend, do so before it's too late.